maybe we could use today for a little therapy. I think I could use it. I think I could use it. And I think sometimes you're you're pretty good at it, uh, especially since you know uh, you know all of the the useless information out there. And uh, maybe I need a little bit of it. Could you psychoanalyze me a little bit for a second, Debs? I'd appreciate. Would it. love to. Um, golly, why do I feel the way I do about Jordan Poole? What is it? And and, and I can define it like it. There's not there's not the vitriol that I know that it sounds like. Yeah, but yeah. even just like okay, this game's gonna start in two hours. The Warriors, gonna, and I just am like. Mm, I don't like watching him play basketball. Well, let's start there. It's, it's, because it's I, I very think, uncomfortable for me. I think that what you like about basketball, as I can psychoanalyze you, you like the way the Warriors play because it's ball movement, it's ball sharing, it's intricate, it's exciting, it's not a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, which is partly why you don't love the Chris Paul game, you don't like his game, wow. you don't like James Harden's game, you don't like Russell Westbrook's game, you don't like that type of a player, I think, in general. I don't like players who try to make the official think something happened that didn't happen. And also the but, dribble, 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 right, me, me, me basketball. Right. And, and, and and to a degree, what I just said is is a little hip, hypocritical because every single player uh, embellishes in basketball sure. or any sport, for that matter. Derek Jeter, once upon a time, wanted us to think the ball hit him when it didn't. Uh, don't get right. me started with soccer. My God, the whole thing is based on uh, overacting. And as a white person who couldn't jump, that was my entire high school career, was trying to get the official to think that when my shot got blocked, that they got my arm. Yesterday was I the four-year anniversary of Disgrace and Chase, <laughs> and I embellished about three or four different exactly. ones. Exactly. Thank you, Kalena. I got That's, no calls. So it's not just that. It's not just that. Right. But but Jordan's, uh, his antics with the flying into the into the stands, and then four on five on the other end. Yeah, I hated it. I hated it. But I'm not sitting here like stuffy, smart pass guy. Right. I love Steph Curry, and he throws the ball with a hook shot pass over his back two or three times a game. So it's not like I want some sort of Tom Amansky fundamentals to break Thank out. Thank you. Like, that's not Thank what... you, Fred McGriff. <laughs> Again, we that's are... That's not uh... what I'm getting at. Like, I don't right. want to do the mic and drill... Remember the mic and drill? Oh yeah, Dan Hunt showed me that in 1981. I, it's not like that's not what I'm saying. The whole thing for for all of us, like it ended up dominating our jobs and this team for the better part of a year. And two things, Ralph, can be equally true, mm. which is that Draymond was totally wrong. Yet I also find Jordan Poole to be a um, what's the word that I want to put in there? Um, it's petulant. Well, I was more like, I, I find him to be a turnoff. Right. I, I watch it. Like, even now, he could be, because he's not starting, let me sit there on the bench tonight and just, boop, the camera goes to him. And I'm like, Ugh. I just find him to be a turnoff. I think that's part of it. And that's where we can really, you know, dive deep on you in terms of Jordan Poole, because it's something about his attitude and his lack of an appreciation for what he had and a lack of appreciation for what he still has, which is an NBA career. Because it seems like, you know, his attitude, his behavior is a little bit tone deaf as to what's going on around him. And when he was here, he was on a championship team and it never felt like he had that appreciation or that willingness to embrace the Warriors ethos. Well, and I like I get what you're saying, although I don't I, I don't want to say that he never had that. Like Jordan's got two things that should make everybody love him. Should make everybody love him. A, he worked his butt off. Yeah. To come out of the G League and and become a, a nine-figure player. Worked his tail off. And and B, uh he helped a he helped he helped our favorite team win a title. Right. Like, usually those things are like, well, you're walking on water the rest of the way. But my perception is, and, you know, famously, you don't know Jordan Poole. Sure. Right. I don't know Jordan Poole. Yes, I've been in Jordan's presence. I've talked to Jordan. Um, but, no, I don't know the man. But, yeah, my perception is, is that this is way bigger than the punch, and I absolutely am one of the people who believes or is curious to know where the vitriol came from that led to the punch. I don't mean that day. 
I mean all year long. I mean for months on end. Like what did and, and I get confused when I think a certain thing and then I see Steph and Clay uh just hug it up and hug it out and 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 heap praise. But it's like, but I also know you greenlit a trade, Steph. So you you could tell me all you want, like no, man, Jordan was great. I love the man, and let's yeah, hug and let's that's just jump. all Steph optics. But I know that you also greenlit a trade, man. I know this. That Steph Curry, the brand, is what that is. In the offseason after the trade, and you go and you work out with him, hey, Clay, let's go work out with Jordan Poole. We're going to show the world that there are no hard feelings. And that's just, to me, that's branding more than it is an actual, like, hey, let's reach out and make sure that he's okay. I don't know this for certain, but that's the way it comes across to me as a person because there was hard feelings going into the year, even before the punch. You know, Clay said what he said yep. about the trip overseas where, you know, Jordan was feeling himself. And I think that the veterans felt like Jordan was a little bit over his skis in terms of his self importance. And I think that rubs you the wrong way. Guys who don't have an appreciation for what's come before them. Well, and also an appreciation for. Uh, almost like what you've earned, but where that all needs to be tucked in. I firmly believe money changed Jordan Poole, big time. I think we're dealing with a complete and total ego maniac. And maybe that sounds stupid. We're talking about the NBA. Like, hello, they're all incredible ego maniacs, right? But there's a different way to do that. Right. There's a different way to cut that, that, that cake. And, and I think that, again, I'm not doing this based on my experience, I've got almost none directly with Jordan Poole. But I hear things. People talk to people. This is now a second organization. Plus, you're looking at the output, right? Guru's right. Everybody predicted it. Oh, my God. Jordan Poole, as the one on a team that doesn't care if they win, he's going to average 30. No, he's going to get actually removed from the starting lineup and be probably right. the worst every you know like major minute player in the whole league. Like, that speaks volumes, does it not? He's not well-liked by his teammates in Washington. That's fascinating. Why would that be? It's the way he plays. And after the last the 12 months of what we said in this town, does anybody want to, like, grab that fact and rework? And I, we're not going to spend an hour on Jordan. But, like, I don't know. Does anybody want to rework their thought about Jordan Poole now knowing that the Wizards players don't like him either? If Draymond never would have punched Jordan Poole then, and everything else took place, Jordan Poole had a bit of a down year and then they traded him for Chris Paul and all the rest of it, we would all vilify Jordan Poole. But there is still some part of the Jordan Poole story that feels like he was a victim. And that's not unfair to think that because he Correct. was victimized by Draymond Green in that moment. And, you know, I've watched the video probably 150 times, and every time I watch it, it looks more and more menacing oh, it's in terms of it's totally like awful. how that played out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that definitely cast a pall over his entire season. But at the same time, okay, now you've gotten your freedom. You have your bag. You have your new team. Go out there and prove to everyone that you're not that guy, and I'm looking at it again, and I misspoke earlier. There's 144 players who qualify, and he's 144th <laughs> in field goal percentage. He's shooting 39.9% uh, uh. mark from the floor, 309 from three. He's averaging 16 a game yeah, but on 14 shots. You know me. Like, yes, these people, this is pro sports. He's wildly unproductive. You're judged by your effectiveness. But now you're a wizard. I don't care. I, I, don't, I don't care if you miss all of your shots. It's, it, it, to me, I'm much more focused on all of the other stuff. Like the highlight package, could, they could do shocked and a fool. For the whole year, just on Jordan. Shacked in a pool. Thank you. Uh, three. Anyway. I'll take it. I'm working I mean, hard like, today, right. Greg. It's a like, short show. Uh, yeah, hey, plug it all in now. Don't <laughs> don't save anything for later. That's true. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I if you're missing shots, you're missing shots. Your decision making, which is what I harped on all year last year, has gotten worse because you were given that freedom. So the lack of maturity is just oozing out of every single part of him and his game, and, uh, and 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 it does. It makes me wonder about 
the larger picture of what that was all like for the Warriors in the locker room and and everything. You're you're pointing to whether or not he's kind of a sympathetic figure, and and yes, he always will be with regard to what happened to him that day in practice. But for me, that ends as soon as you leave the Warriors. My sympathy was with you that whole year. And if you found it hard to be in the workplace with that person, pass him the ball and set a screen for him and all of that stuff, okay, I, I got you. I, I understand. But as you pointed out, now your money, you couldn't be geographically further away. Right. You've got your own team, your own situation. If that's still bugging you now, I'm sorry, man. That's on you. Yeah, so did I, I don't know what to do. He's with that played anymore. 55 games, and he is the least effective shooter in the association among qualified players. And so that, I still think for me, there's a little spot inside me that will always have sympathy for Jordan Poole for the way that it went and the way that it ended. But at the same time, you've got to you've got to sink or swim in professional sports, and you've got to do it on your own because they paid you a bunch of money. Washington traded for you. He's making 27.5 this year. He's got three more years on his deal worth just under a hundred million over the next three. So Jordan Poole now, as a professional basketball player, you've got to put the the unfortunate things that have happened aside and go out there and have a career. He's only 24 years old. He won't be 25 until June. That's crazy. So at the end of this year, assuming Washington doesn't make a deep run, <laughs> he's get, he'll assumption. be 25 when he starts next year. So 25, 26, 27 in his final year under contract with Washington. This is your career, young man. Yeah. I mean, this this is it. Because if you play like this, you're going to be out of the league before that three-year contract is up. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that, that's that side of it. And then the other side of it is, it's kind of funny sometimes, we get excited for the measuring stick games. Oh, Denver's in town. Yeah. All right, well, I, maybe I could offer a different perspective. Um, with what we've sort of laid out over the last week or so with Warrior Basketball and the third easiest schedule in the league the rest of the way and all of that, um, the intensity, I know this is counterintuitive for fans and there's no way to fix it, but the intensity should be ramped up much more for nights like tonight than uh, than Denver um, on national TV on Sunday. These are the games you can't lose. Flat out, may not lose. And with Andrew Wiggins out, Chris Paul's back, your lineup is getting shuffled a little bit, are you out of sync? You're on the road now. It's your body clock ready to go. None of this is sexy. A game between anybody and the Wizards is not sexy. But I would just say that to, to the Warriors and their fans, this is a must. I know you don't love the, the phrase must yeah, win. Yeah. You cannot afford to lose any of these, especially this one. This is the cuppiest of the cupcakes in the whole damn league. This is as cuppy as it gets. Yeah. You may yeah. not lose these games to me it's not about winning or losing because i'm assuming that the win is going to happen and if you happen to lose this game then we can just cancel everything about may and we can start thinking about the lottery to me this game is about how you win and i mentioned it during the during the crossover you've got a game thursday a game friday and a game sunday so this is a tight little pack of games in days it's four games and six nights all on the road this is one that you have to win, win early, and rest your guys. That way you have a chance to go in and maybe take both ends of the New York and the Toronto back-to-back. -to -back. And if you do that, if you go into Boston having won the first three games of the trip, well, now Boston's a freebie, in my opinion. I agree. I agree. I, I'm, and maybe but this you is, set that up tonight, Mark, and I, I'm, I'm not looking ahead. No doubt. No I'm doubt. looking at tonight, and I'm thinking, if I'm Steph or Draymond or Clay. I'm thinking, how do we win this game with me playing 26 minutes? That's the goal. Yeah. The goal is to win, of course. The second goal is win and watch Lester and Gee play.